WWE are really all in with this crowd return. We finally saw John Cena. I, I mean, I can see the guy with my own eyes. And how cool is that? I mean, man, the show is so good. I've heard reports you're getting lucky today. The video review about to give us 1.4 inches. I mean, if you click that like button, it's two more inches than usual. And trust me, people, this kind of opportunity is not to be wasted. Now, before we talk about the absolute madness that Money in the Bank 2021 was, I've got some breaking news. John Cena is going to kick off Monday Night Raw. Now, look, John, I don't think you can see very well. The championship is blue. Roman is on SmackDown. I don't think that necessarily means that John Cena is going to be on Monday Night Raw. I just think it means that WWE want to capitalize on John Cena's return and kick off Monday Night Raw with John Cena because that's what people are talking about the most. People don't want to wait for a week to see John Cena. We want to know the answers and John Cena is going to explain his actions. His actions were doing this to Roman. That was all, that was it. And by God, I loved it. And after the show, he actually revealed we're going to see more of John Cena. We're gonna see him with our own eyes. And look, I don't want this whole talk about I'm a part-timer, I wanna give opportunities to younger people. None of that crap, John. I just want you to say you're gonna bury the whole freaking roster. I want the actual return of Cena wins, LOL. More on John Cena later in this video. I mean, we gotta get through this. Now, is Money in the Bank 2021 a very good pay-per-view? Absolutely. Loved it. One of the major things you probably noticed during this paper is that we have a lot of great talent, but tonight they tried twice as hard. Every match had some very interesting sequences that we never seen before. The superstars were absolute mad lads last night and the crowd reacted. And of course a big shout out goes to the crowd. We did get some weird ass chants during the show like we want Becky. I personally didn't hear that but I've seen someone on Twitter saying that people chanted you can't wrestle to Roman Reigns. Are you okay? Other than that, the crowd was absolutely amazing, very energetic, and made the show even better. It was a great show, we got surprises, we got a few disappointments or just more like questions, questionable booking decisions. Uh, and most importantly, this paper you kind of changed my mind on a few things, on rivalries that I didn't care about, kind of changed. I'll talk about that a little bit later. Don't quote me on this, was that the best kickoff show of all time. Give me some good examples of kickoff matches, I'm pretty sure we got a lot of them, but this one was really special. So we got Mysterios versus the Usos for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. You guys know I'm not very good on reviewing matches, I'm not gonna talk about every single move, I'm just gonna put it on the screen and you guys basically know what I'm talking about. I don't remember the last time I watched a kickoff match and was this entertained. I mean, it's kind of a given, it's Mysterios versus the Usos, but if the plan was to get a lot more people to sign into the WWE Network, I don't think there was a better way to do it because this match was absolutely phenomenal. Like I've said, a lot of interesting sequences, a lot of interesting spots I've never seen before. Most notably that 619 where one Uso saved the other. Man, it really is all about familia. I wish Dominic did something like this, you know, papi! I've also noted that the selling on the show was absolutely unbelievable. Like I've said, everyone was just amped up. The finish of the match was also really good where both of the Usos pinned Rey Mysterio and the Usos became the WWE SmackDown Tag Team Champions. The thing is, you know, yes, I don't necessarily think Jimmy Uso deserves a championship right now. After what he did, a lot of superstars would get punished. And he's not because he's in a good position and that's not fair to the entire roster. That's my take on it. I do still love the guy. I'm just saying it's kind of unfair that sometimes someone makes a mistake and gets punished and sometimes it doesn't affect their careers at all. It's not fair. With that being said, it's still a great moment and seeing, you know, every oos with the championship was really, really nice to see. We got a backstage segment later on the show. Everyone is happy, but Roman Reigns says, well, I do have to take the credit. If it wasn't for me, Jay wouldn't be here right now. And you. And that's all he said. The crowd laughed, getting the joke that it's all about his personal issues. That was really funny. That, that was nice. Maybe that's WWE's weird way of punishing the guy, just letting the people know, you know, kind of making him embarrassed. I don't think that's 
cool to do that, but whatever, man. I mean, he deserved worse, honestly. So Lakov said, this has to be one of, if not the best kickoff match I have ever seen. Very entertaining. Loved it. Loved the moment. You know, as much as I might not agree with it, I, I still popped. I mean, at the end of the day, I do love the tag team and it was a great moment. And now seeing all of them with championships, that's gonna be special. Now we need someone with the Intercontinental Championship. So kickoff show absolutely delivered and showed us what this paper is going to be all about let's talk about the main show the main show kicked off in a very big way with a women's money in the bank ladder match asuka naomi alexa bliss nikki cross Liv morgan zelina vega women's champions natalia and tamina snuka so it was also interesting seeing uh, the responses a lot of people popped for alexa bliss which honestly surprised me because i'm not a fan of the gimmick i think it sucks but the crowd responded in a very positive way so maybe it's just me maybe it's just not my cup of coffee now don't get me wrong i'm not saying i did not enjoy the match it did offer quite a few cool spots it's just that if you put this match next to the men's ladder match it's just so watered down it's not even close it was still entertaining to watch seeing the crowd responding i mean probably for a few weeks i'm not gonna be that harsh on the wwe right now i'm enjoying it as a wrestling fan you know whatever the case may be i'm just happy that we're in position that we are right now i'm just happy we have fans back and it made me not as nitpicky so like i've said the match was still very good i don't have any complaints i wouldn't say it was the best women's ladder match though it, it's definitely not there one thing that i was convinced of during this match is that Liv morgan is going to win because i've seen the kickoff show and they asked her about the money in the bank match she was crying she was happy she had that winner face Basically, when you look at someone, you know that person is going to win the match because they can't really hide their emotions. So I was like, okay, she's winning. She's winning. She just spoiled it. And that wasn't the case, but I wish it was. So we saw all the women fighting like a bunch of idiots and not focusing on the briefcase. Uh, and Nikki, almost superhero, just takes the briefcase, wins the match, and I, I, I was honestly shocked. I had the Undertaker guy face. I'm, I'm not even uh, exaggerating. When that match ended, I was just in shock. I was, uh, how, how did that happen? Why did she win the match? Isn't that a comedy gimmick that is basically going nowhere? I'm confused. The only explanation I have. Which may not even be the case, but I think uh, she's gonna drop the briefcase to Alexa Bliss. Or maybe they're gonna be friends, like they are right now, I think. And she is just going to hand the briefcase to Alexa Bliss. She's gonna do it with her magic, which is something we've seen during this match as well. Give me my briefcase. And she's gonna hand the briefcase. I don't know why I did that, but you get the point. So I guess the only positive thing about the outcome, I gotta say, is that it definitely shocked me. It was quite a moment. You know, and that's exactly what my wife said. Well, at least we're surprised. And I'm sure most of you feel the same way. Do I think it was a right booking decision? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. This gives me Otis vibes. And this is something we definitely don't want to see in Money in the Bank matches anymore. The Money in the Bank in general, the concept suffered so much over the years that... I just, I just didn't like it. That's just my take on it. Then we saw the Raw Tag Team Titles match. The Viking Raiders versus AJ Styles and Amis. And boy, did that surprise me. Well, maybe not surprise me. Kind of confused me in a way. First of all, AJ Styles got a huge pop from the crowd. Like, they welcomed the guy with open arms like the biggest babyface in the WWE. I get that. But during the match... They were chanting for AJ and Amis, they were cheering them, and they were, I wouldn't say booing the Viking Raiders, but they weren't really responding well. Uh, and that's kind of interesting, you know, it was kind of sad watching these two not getting the response that I wish they got, but I get it, it's AJ Styles. And this is one of the matches that actually surprised me, like, I did not care about this match at all, honestly. But I think everyone did an amazing job, and... You know, in the middle of the match, the crowd got really into it. Again, it goes back to my first point of the video. Everyone tried twice as much. I wouldn't say the ending was underwhelming, but it was kinda... Well, maybe slightly underwhelming, because we got a few near falls, and the finish was just a bit too obvious. We got Amis with the 
power or slam, whatever, and they retained the championships, which wasn't bad by any means, just kind of underwhelming because everything else was so fast paced. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I don't make any sense right here. But they retained the WWE Raw Tag Team Championships, and I guess we gotta wait for Amos and AJ versus Rilla and Orton. That's the money match, SummerSlam. That's the match everyone wants to see. And it's gonna be interesting seeing Riddle and Randy Orton in the tag team division trying to get the championships, winning the championships. I wanna see the interactions. Uh, it's gonna be hilarious. I can't wait. We saw the WWE Championship match Kofi Kingston versus Bobby Lashley. This was exactly what I thought it would be. Like I've said in my predictions video, I wouldn't be surprised if it's going to be a squash match. By the way, my predictions video is so bad right now, like I didn't get most of the stuff right. This I did. I told you that I think it's not gonna be necessarily a squash match, but Bobby is basically going to dominate Kofi Kingston. He missed them women, man. He missed them women. The faster we end this match, the faster I get to touch them women, man. So my man just went on a rampage. It's like in SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 when you click a couple of buttons, you go on a rampage and you're basically unbeatable for a few seconds. Well, that continued for like four minutes, I think, and he just did a move after move to Kofi Kingston with no single offense from Kofi whatsoever at that point. We got the hurt lock and I think Kofi just passed out, you know, he failed to get any offense and the referee stopped the match. So Bobby is still your WWE champion, which is good. Now, it's kind of weird because I've heard reports that Brock Lesnar is definitely not returning, which would be a shame. Maybe WWE are hiding it. They want to keep it as a surprise. I wouldn't be surprised if Brock is not returning yet, which is kind of a shame because I don't see anyone that interesting for Bobby Lashley at SummerSlam, SummerSlam right now. I've heard it's Goldberg, which is a match I definitely don't mind. I want to see it. It's not Brock Lesnar, though. And, you know, at the end of the day... I'm excited about the match because there's always this fear that Goldberg might win. We're just at the edge of our seats praying that Goldberg doesn't win another WWE Championship. I like that feeling. I really like that nervous feeling while watching wrestling. It makes it a bit more real. The thing is, I'm not sure how I feel about it. I'm not sure how I feel about it, but we'll see. For right, right now, we have no idea who is he going to face. It could be John Cena, actually. John Cena is going to be on Monday Night Raw. Maybe, which is something I don't want to see, maybe Cena is winning the WWE Championship, Cena reigns undisputed championship. Not something I want to see. It's a possibility though. Then we got the Raw Women's title match, Charlotte Flair versus Rhea Ripley. This one changed my mind, man. I don't know. Like, I hated the storyline. I didn't enjoy a single moment of their story. I think it sucked. And the crowd, they didn't care either. Like, for the majority of the match, at first they were chanting for Becky Lynch, and Charlotte got offended, she flipped the crowd. And you know what I hate about the WWE? This really pissed me off. They turned off the screen. We got a black screen while she was flipping off the crowd. We saw a bit of it, and it's like, it's not that edgy. Like, it's really not that edgy. Even on PG programming, you can probably do that, right? It's not that crazy. I mean, they use the B word every damn week and they can't do this, but it was a great moment. So like I've said, the crowd were not really into this match, but then it all changed. It all changed when it comes to the crowd and myself because I started to really get into this match. This was a good one, man. This was really a good one. And I, I knew it's not gonna be bad, but I just... I was convinced I'm not gonna get into it. We got a bunch of near falls, uh, pretty interesting looking spots. We even got the natural selection of the top rope, but that didn't end the match. Charlotte Flair injured Rhea Ripley's leg. We got the figure four and Rhea Ripley tapped out, which is okay. Great moment, you know, surprised the crowd, changed everyone's opinion and, you know, reaction towards this match. The thing is, though, I pretty much called it in my predictions video because, you know, WWE want to have that one bad moment on the show or someone that people really don't like wins the championship. I was sure this is going to happen. Now, the thing is, I don't know how does that affect Rhea Ripley. I mean, tapping out, I don't know about that. Now, when it comes to Charlotte Flair, as much as I don't like her character, watching her matches, 
a lot of times changes my mind. She can really work, it's just that her character is so predictable and bland right now, that's a shame. But in the ring, amazing. And hopefully that's something we're gonna see from Charles Flair a lot more. I don't know if I agree with that booking decision. I don't think Rhea Ripley needed to drop the championship right now in her first championship defense with the crowd, but maybe she's gonna be better at chasing the championship than being a champion because so far it seems like it. The men's money in the bank match was just something else, man. We saw Riddle, Owens, Nakamura, Ricochet, McIntyre, Morrison, E and Rollins and it seemed like every single competitor just tried to steal the show. We saw so many goddamn spots I'm not even gonna remember or try to, but I'll put, uh, but I'll make sure to put most of them on the screen. As always, John Morrison was absolutely amazing, innovative, uh, ricochet with that spot. Come on, man. It's like, how can you have this guy on the roster and not know what to do with him? I'm honestly not exaggerating. I believe this has to be one of the greatest money in the bank matches of all time. I mean, at least in the past 10 years, it has to be the best one. The selection of superstars was just perfect. Everyone added something to the match. At the beginning of the match, I kind of started regretting my prediction because I kind of knew Drew is not winning this match. I forgot about Big E and how WWE talked about pushing the guy and you know, all these reports. Obviously, it's Big E. We got the big ending of the ladder. And of course, Big E takes the briefcase wins money in the bank, he now has the briefcase and we don't know whether he's going to challenge Lashley or Roman or whoever is a champion when he decides to cash in. The only thing I don't like about a babyface money in the bank holder is that they don't necessarily take the opportunities. They're more like, okay, I have a briefcase, let's set up a match. Which doesn't make any sense in the current WWE world because you can basically attack a champion and you get a match even though you barely won any matches in like two years. That always happens. You can have someone like Goldberg who didn't wrestle for, I don't know, 15 years. He can get a championship opportunity. That's how it works in the WWE. So using a briefcase like that just doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Which I know that should be the case. I don't agree with everyone getting championship opportunities even though they don't deserve it, but that's how it is. I guess I should make a prediction. So, Roman Reigns is facing John Cena, Lashley doesn't have an opponent. It's probably not gonna be Goldberg because WWE probably know that, you know, people don't wanna see that, most of the people. Big E is gonna set up a match against Lashley at SummerSlam. He's gonna announce it on SmackDown or Raw or interfere, basically challenge him on Raw actually on the show and that's gonna be the match Lashley E and I think it's a pretty marquee match I I like that idea I love that idea so I don't mind it and it does make a bit more sense you know because Lashley is on Raw you can't get a championship opportunity just like that when you're on Smackdown so right now he would cash in get the match and uh, I don't know who I would be rooting for because I want to see Lashley as a champion for a bit longer, but Big E as a champion sounds really, really good. So it's going to be pretty interesting to see. And finally, the WWE Universal Championship Edge versus Roman Reigns. I love the crowd's response to both of these superstars. I loved this match, but I've seen mixed reactions. Now look, people. I would never consider myself one of the smartest wrestling fans, reviewers, or whatever you want to call me. I'm a fan who happens to make wrestling videos. I'm not trying to sound like a guru. My opinions are just that. My opinions, my taste in wrestling. But even an idiot like me can understand how great this match was. If you can't understand that, maybe wrestling is just... Maybe it's not for you because this was really easy to understand. It was a long match with classic wrestling. It starts off slow and it basically builds over time. At first it was all 50-50. Both competitors tried to show some dominance. I don't know about you guys, I love these kind of matches. Obviously to have that kind of match you need a great storyline and that's the case. If we're gonna see that kind of match in a random episode of Raw with random competitors with no story, maybe it won't make 
as much sense. I understand that, but this one, this this one needed it. This type of build during the match gives a vibe of a big match feel. Of course, later it got a lot more physical. I, I absolutely love this match. I don't know what to say, man. What's uh, something that always pisses me off, though, is when the referee is acting like a piece of paper. So they basically bumped into the referee and my man was injured. Like he got touched, all right? We saw people falling off the ladders. This man got touched. He went down. He couldn't continue anymore. And it does make a lot of sense in my opinion. Of course, Edge had the opportunities to win the match, but the referee wasn't there. We also saw Usos trying to interfere, but the Mysterios interfered to help Edge. And at one point, even though the referee was down, it seemed like Roman Reigns is about to lose because the referee can come out at any point right now. But we saw Seth Rollins with the kick, but that wasn't actually it. The match continues, but then we saw another distraction from Seth Rollins, Edge attacks him, gets distracted, Spear and Roman Reigns retains the championship. He's still your WWE Universal Champion. After the match, we saw a brawl between Seth Rollins and Edge. They left the arena. So first of all, great match. Don't have many issues except for maybe some interferences because at the end of the day, I wanted to see a fair match between Edge and Roman Reigns. But it does make Edge versus Rollins a bit more interesting. Roman Reigns grabs the microphone and says, now the whole world has to acknowledge me. He stares into the camera. We we hear John Cena's music crowd goes nuts. The man is back. John Cena is back in the WWE. So exciting, man. So exciting. I don't even know what to say at this point. I'm sure we all felt the same way. And he basically does a You Can See Me Town to Roman Reigns. And that's how the show ends. I wouldn't say John Cena already challenged Roman Reigns, but it seems like this is where it's going. It's pretty obvious. But WWE did a good job at, you know, not answering all the questions. Yes, we got John Cena. That is enough. Now we gotta wait and see what it's all about. And we're not gonna wait for long because it's happening tomorrow. John Cena is gonna explain his action. I'm very excited about this and hopefully he's actually going to be in the WWE for a bit longer. If I would have to predict, I think, after SummerSlam, he's leaving, obviously. But I hope that's not the case. So yeah, that was your Money in the Bank 2021. A very solid pay-per-view. I don't have many complaints. So yeah, people, that's all I have for you today. Let me know in the comments below how did you feel about the pay-per-view? Did you enjoy it? And what are your predictions for SummerSlam? Do you think we're getting Cena vs. Reigns? Do you think we're getting Bobby vs. Goldberg or Big E? Thank you very much, the great one. Peace, love, and hugs. It's been a pleasure. Bye.